My parents made that decision without me, <laughs> without very much of my input. Because none of them got to be that American dream, you know, even though they were Americans. Yes. Yeah. So I came in 1950. Right after the communists took over China, mainland China. You know, it's funny. Um, some Chinese parents don't like to talk about that, you know. Um, yeah, my mom is from Taiwan. I think um, they were in an era where most people just thought that going to America would immediately mean prosperity. So that's a very kind of sad story because he was so close and he, I think it's also really sad because he never told anyone that he went to these schools. You know, and he talked about how his his parents died in, and I, I think he's exaggerating, but the stories he tells about how they died, it just paints this, it's, it's a whole different world. I mean, of just complete, you know, poverty and lack of access to things. So that his distant aunt, worked in a garment factory, but he didn't know which one. So he went knocking to each, knocking on the door for every garment factory that he could. My parents immigrated to New York. Um, I believe when my mom was maybe in her late 20s or early 30s, and my dad was in his 30s, I think. And my parents are from Fujian province in China, and I was born in Puzhou, which is, maybe I think it's the capital city of the province, I'm not totally sure. Um, and I grew up, I spent a lot of time in Fujian, which is a rural area that's nearby. I came to Boston when I was six. Oh, uh, okay, let me uh, start with my, my father. Okay, because uh, I really don't know my uh, grandfather. Uh, he passed away before I was born. He did a painting, like he was a, he's an artist, and so he was um, very into painting, very large paintings, I guess, for whatever reason. Um, he was that his um, distant uncle started and he worked there for a while before kind of moving between New York and other far-flung places. Uh, my father, uh, he owns a, a laundry uh, uh, in New York City, a big one, uh, do, do quite well. So uh, uh, my father went back to uh, 1936 and get married and immediately came back. So he doesn't have mu much chance to in the mango with my mother. And my mom actually joined my dad a year before I did. Like, it basically worked out that I was kind of without my parents in China for a year, just with my grandmother on my mom's side. My parents didn't meet in China. Um, my dad, when he arrived in Minnesota, like, um, some migrant workers who who um, don't have a lot of resources or um, might not have the proper papers to stay in the U.S., um, they get taken advantage of. And my dad was in a pretty toxic environment where he was emotionally and physically abused as a, a migrant worker. And so he had actually left Minnesota and um, came to New York in search of a very distant aunt of his who could maybe offer him a little bit of assistance in terms of settling elsewhere. Um, you know, you, you, I'm sure you're familiar with the paper Sun. Uh, because of the uh, Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, which bans the immigration of the Chinese laborers uh, to the United States. The only way to enter the U.S. is by buying or putting a paper indicating that the holder is the son 
or daughter of a Chinese American that is a citizen of the United States? I think my dad probably saw it as an opportunity. He became pen pals with this author of a book of watercolor painting tips, and this was like a book that he found in his like college library. And he struck up a friendship with this person who ended up being somebody who lives in New York and got a sponsorship to come to the States and got some advice about where to apply for grad school. So he went to Boston University. So I think it very much was like a taking up a new opportunity. Um, and then he was able, I guess, on the student visa to bring over his wife, you know, my mom and, and me. Since I left China, that's about 50, about 50, 56 years uh, since I left China, I didn't go her, back. Her grandfather's house, the house that um, my grandfather grew up in and where my mom stayed. Because my mom was walking around and said, I think this is the fish pond, the village fish pond. And, uh, and, 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 and she's, and, I think, you know, she said, this is the village well. I remember this. Of course, it looks more modern now, right? Yes, I stand before the house, look at my house. A, la a lady passed by, and I happened to ask the lady, uh, do you know about uh, who owns this house? And then she said, the fish pond was quite near. And then she looked, and <laughs> there's like a 10-story condo there now. She goes, this was not there. <laughs> uh, he, he, she mentioned that uh, the owner left uh, long, long ago, and there's people that move in uh, that live there, you know. So I was surprised, and she asked me uh, uh, who my name, and I mentioned my name and my parents' name. Behold, <laughs> yeah. And so the older, older person who who was in his nineties who remembered my her brother said, "Oh yeah, that is where the fish pond was." All the windows, all the doors open, and they all came out and said, "So you are so and so," you know. So they know me. They they still remember me, and they they said, uh, "Oh, you are you are a classmate of mine, a uh, uh, schoolmate of mine." You know, thinking back. I still remember really uh, that that uh, that is true. Yeah, that was that was that was really that was a really yeah that was a wild trip for my mom to go there. That was something. Um, um, my uncle, who from my dad's side, um, he runs a very humble business. He actually works at a wet market in Tashan, um, selling noodles and. Um, festival baked goods and um, just kind of uh, uh, wontons and, and whatnot. So it's nice during the times that I was able to go back to China, uh, be able to just sit behind the stall and help him out as well. Yeah. The many trips I, I went back to China, I, 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 I get to know a lot of people from my, my village. You know, and then, uh, 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 so it's, it's nice people, it's, it's a peaceful people. My grandfather on my dad's side was an avid calligrapher, so he would try to teach me calligraphy during the time I was back. Um, he operated a small kind of cigarette and candy store on the street um, side of their apartment. Um, and my grandmother is this um, kind of neighborhood fixture for prayers and um, kind of sharing blessings. She's, I, I, I don't really understand it fully, but there are, um, during certain occasions, people would pay um, 
certain aunties to say blessings and and um, uh, kind of go through the traditional um, rites. And my grandmother was kind of a specialist in that. Um, and then my uncle, I really got to know him. He's, he's super lovely. And that's a that's actually a very practical. Uh, example of what I'm talking about um, in terms of the difficulty of preserving my own identity, you know, as queer, um, my own gender identity um, as non-binary, while, you know, introducing my culture, because I feel like I, I, it would be a great shock to my relatives to introduce her as my Right, because we, we're, we're, you know, like we can move in these different places. That's why it's so important for my sister and I to continue to support the business where, um, when we can, because you know we know that it's something that really fulfills our parents' you know, connection to the community, and and it's also a way for us to better understand. Um, those dynamics and to preserve and understand our heritage too. And, and I think by continuing to practice these traditions um, and, and expanding it to other people too, when, when we grow older or um, expand, maybe our family um, will really get to widen the road. I'm hoping through my writing and teaching that um, future generations have an understanding and an appreciation of what um, our collective hist and shared history, what people did to survive. And that it, I mean, it re and it wasn't, I mean, it really wasn't easy. I would just love to help people like who, who look like me, but today, not feel that deep sense of shame for being Chinese for so long. Because I think it's also very common to the kids who were first generation who grew up here in the 80s, the 90s, we just all wanted to be white. Oh, okay, that, that was a broad stroke, but you know, so many of us wanted to be white and normal, right? We all, we wanted to not eat chops with chopsticks. We wanted... I remember I just wanted to eat with a knife and fork at home so badly, and I wasn't allowed to, you know? And, and gosh, I just wasted so many years of my life being ashamed of, of who I am. It has been an achievement for me to, to be happy, you know, to, like, find a way to thrive and, and just, you know, feel like I love my family and I love my life here. But I've often felt like maybe I'm not such a good link to the past before me in some ways because I feel conflicted and I feel ambivalent about my own culture of origin because even though there's things that I deeply love and feel very deeply connected to, like food is a huge among those, um, there's also parts of the culture that I grew up with, you know, ideas of gender, ideas of, um, you know, very sexist and patriarchal ideas that, that I was raised with that I don't I don't like, you know, and I feel like I spent a lot of time undoing it myself. I would just love for, for the next generation not to have that because you're here, you're allowed to make your own, your own identity, you're allowed to, to, you know, shape who you are and how you want to be perceived and just none of that, don't, don't be ashamed of any of that. And I, I think that's what I would really, really hope that... <laughs> 
kids today don't grow up feeling the way I did. And I'm hoping that future generations value everything that people have done and are compassionate and proud of all of our of our history, the, you know, the great things and the warts, right? All the all the aspects, not just like you have to be what uh what is it like a you know super successful professional or, or whatever it is, but everything, you know, from from people who've had to, you know, do very difficult, unpleasant things, dirty things, you know, to those who have, you know, uh, whatever become powerful and shining in other ways, um, and that, um, and that there's a really um, good understanding and appreciation and love of, the, you know, the hyphenated part, the Chinese American. Right, the, how complicated that is, and how rich and, and interesting it is, and that that's not erased. I mean, it was always about you know what do the what does the next generation do? It, it didn't seem, and when I look at my family, you know, it didn't very much seem like you know people that generations kept things for themselves. You know, it's like okay, what's the next generation? How are they going to benefit from this?